Okay. Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back. It's uh, exciting to be back at practice. Um, we had our first practice this morning. You could tell uh, that we didn't play that long ago. I think that's one of the benefits of, of playing late like we did in, in January. Uh, there's a lot of familiarity, uh, whether it's drills to um, just young guys knowing where they're supposed to be. Some of these drills we just did with these young guys January 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. So um, that's the that's the positive part is the fact that uh, uh, we have a lot of guys that have not been away from football for that long. I think maybe the negative side of things is um, we had so many kids have season-ending surgeries that were down quite a few numbers, uh, especially in the defensive line. So we've got to be pretty creative on how we're doing practice uh, right now. Uh, you know, we like to do our double rep stuff. We don't have the ability to do that. So opposite of that, we have a, a team period going and opposite of that, we have seven on seven just because we have a few more skilled kids. So we'll have to adapt and adjust quite a bit uh, throughout the spring. We won't have a traditional spring game. We will have a few scrimmages, but not for very many plays because we're, once again, we're down so many defensive linemen uh, for this spring. But uh, it was a good first day and guys were flying around and good leadership, good energy. And uh, we'll have another practice on Thursday, which will be uh, same thing, just helmets and and, uh, and jerseys, and then uh, have that uh, week of spring break, which I forgot we didn't have spring break last year, so it was a it was a grind going through everything. But this year we have spring break, and come back from that, we'll be able to put the pads on and go to work. I know we got the press release, but what kind of drew you to coach Thad Ward to coach the receivers this year? A couple things. I'd, I'd met Thad a number of times through Brian Anderson. Uh, he and BA have, have been longtime friends, and um, I just had learned a lot about Thad. He'd been in a lot of really good places, visited with a few coaches that uh, he worked under that spoke uh, uh, very, very highly of him as far as uh, not only his knowledge of, of the game and his knowledge of receiver play, but uh, uh, building relationships and uh, um, getting the, the most out of his receivers. And so it's been just a, a couple weeks, but uh, like uh, where it's heading right now. And then with the off season, was there any few players that really took a huge step forward through the strength and conditioning portion? Well, there's yeah, uh, everybody did. In in uh, the fact of it was a shorter window, we didn't really get going until almost the first of February after taking a little bit of time off uh, after the bowl game. But uh, you know, just the amount of lean muscle mass and um, body fat lost and, and those things. There's a number of guys that uh, uh, really you know I think helped their bodies out, and now we've got to continue that on for the rest of the spring. Back to those numbers, even at 85, and you guys are fairly close to that, how difficult is it to keep everything in balance? You mentioned you've got more skill than, than big bodies right now. Yeah, it's it's difficult, but, um, you know, we just got to be creative in what, we, what we're doing. I, I, I know that we need to be a little bit better in special teams, uh, something that uh, uh, we as a staff talked about. We were good on special teams, but I think we can be better and need to be better on special teams. So that's another area that you typically don't have a lot of defensive offensive linemen on some of those special teams units. So we're able to take uh, a period of time and, and work special teams in, in place of a team period as well, just to keep pushing the young guys forward. We have so many young guys that I'm excited about, but just haven't played football and need uh, need you know constant repetition and constant coaching. And so uh, we'll spend some a lot of that time on special teams as well, trying to balance those uh, uh, our, some of our numbers out. You don't bring in a experienced starting quarterback with the idea of not playing him, but he's not available this spring. So what does this spring, what kind of opportunities does it afford those other young guys? Well, uh, excited uh, about those guys. Um, you know, Will is even bigger and stronger. Will's 245 probably uh, and just needs to continue to take repetitions and, and uh, uh, he'll, he'll run with the ones this spring. Um, Jaron's uh, that much more experienced and better. Uh, Jake Rubley, we're excited about. Jake needs. We need to really push Jake uh, this uh, this spring to give him some opportunities uh, and see how his growth and development has been. And then Adrian's learning. Uh, he's out there uh, doing all the things that he can. He can't throw right now this spring, but he's doing some of the the footwork mechanics and run game things. And then visiting with Coach Klein, and we're just Adrian's trying to get up to speed where everybody else is at and learning the offense. Is uh, Khalid Duke a full go for spring, or where is he at? He is not. Um, 
you know, coming off of, of his surgery, he is not. He's uh, uh, just some individual drills right now. We hope to have him to be non-contact, some seven-on-seven seven things, hopefully around the 1st of April. Uh, but, uh, no, he will not be a full participant this spring. Foresee him playing in a hybrid role, yeah, defensive both. end. He's going to play some, you know, similar to what we did last year. He'll play some defensive end, true defensive end, and then he'll play some uh, outside linebacker for us. It's probably uh, disappointing that we don't get him all spring to find out because he needs to be pushed more as a linebacker than he does as a defensive lineman. He's played D line his whole time here, so he's really adept at that and he's really talented, and he's one of the best. I think one of the best pass rushers we have in the Big 12. Now we just have to uh, keep pushing him and keep having him learn as best he can, getting the limited snaps he has as a linebacker. And what would you say as far as uh, what is Crew Jackson's development been? Um, Crew's continuing to get stronger. He's continuing to try to put on weight. He's a long body. I think he's grown a couple inches since uh, he's been here even. Uh, covers so much ground. Um, and he's going to take a, a ton of snaps. He'll play the, the Sam linebacker or nickel spot for us, and he's going to take a ton of snaps uh, this spring, and, and we have to see what uh, uh, what his best skill set is. You know, is, is Can he rush the passer um, like a Khalid can? He's probably not going to be able to cover like a Reggie can, so we've got to do some different things with him, but he just covers so much – ground out there he's so long that he takes away a lot of throws uh just with his length how many defensive linemen would you say you're you're down this spring well i know we had seven at practice today so um you know if, if we were in double rep we'd have one extra so we don't have the ability to do it right now um but i look at a kid like cody stuffelbean and brendan mott those two guys have been in our program a while and i'm excited to see how they grow and develop. Um, Cartez is uh, is the other one that's playing some defensive ends. We really have three defensive ends that we're trying to rotate through that we think can provide some much needed uh, assistance and depth for us this year. Uh, but those guys are going to get the lion's share of the reps against the Cooper Beebe's and Christian Duffy, so they're going to get a great opportunity uh, to see what they can do. With Will stepping back in to, I guess, be the, the starting quarterback for spring stuff again, just like last year, what's the next step in maturation for him? What do you want to see? Um, just feeling more confident throwing the football. Um, he understands our offense so, so well, and, and uh, Coach Klein does a phenomenal job with him. And um, he's really uh, – I was in the quarterback meeting this morning. He's just so, so crisp and confident in what he's doing. Same with Jaron. They just know – uh, what we're doing so well offensively. Now it is making the right read, being decisive, being um, you know confident and, and pulling the trigger and rolling. I saw some really good throws he made today and some seam routes uh, to fill up that excited all of us because it's like, okay, we've seen this uh, out of Will. Now it's a consistency, and Will knows that as well. Will's a really good football player. He just got to gain confidence and gain consistency so it just snaps out of his hand. So running back, who are some young guys you're looking forward to watching this spring? Um, well, we've made the wholesale change to put Jackson in at running back, and I think that's probably the big thing. Um, he'll he'll play some fullback, but if you guys noticed in the in the bowl game, he played some true running back for us, and that's what we've just put him with Coach Anderson and said, go through all the meetings uh, and let's see how far we can we can take it with Jax because he's. Um, it gives us a different dimension for sure running the football. He's got good hands. He'll be able to protect. And now, whether it's Jordan Shippers, whether it's uh, uh, DJ Giddens, I mean, those are a couple that are taking some of the reps. Uh, Devon Withers is out this spring with an injury that he sustained in the fall. Um, and so we don't have a lot of numbers there. And, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to protect uh, Deuce a little bit. He doesn't need to have uh, – he'll, he'll run a lot of, of the – non-contact drills and things like that and seven on seven in some team period but you know he's not going to be in any of the scrimmage situation so it's going to come down to shippers jackson and uh, uh dj i see you have 16 returning starters 10 players that earned all big 12 last year you won five of your last seven games what kind of momentum does this team have chris well um that was great. All those things are last year, uh, and uh, we talked about resetting it. And, um, yeah, there's great optimism. There's great excitement. But, 
you know, we've got to we've got to turn the turn the page, flip the script to 2022, and uh, we do have some good players coming back, um, but we also have to continue to find some other guys and see what guys can can make a make a leap, make a jump that maybe played a limited role or didn't play at all, or or are new to the program that can add great value and great great depth for us because we're. We saw it last year. You're going to need everybody. You're going to need the third linebacker. You're going to need the, the third or fourth safety. You're going to need the second or third quarterback. You're going to need multiple tight ends and, and wide outs. And so that that's the big challenge right now is, is we have great competition with the guys that are out there at a number of spots. We're down, obviously, numbers at a number of spots. So we have to emphasize the guys and the positions that we have a lot of and give those guys great opportunities, whether that's one-on-ones with DBs and wide outs to – to O line stuff, we have to find ways to keep pushing people forward. Uh, you can tell that guys didn't play too long ago. How did that maybe manifest itself in that in that first practice with the energy level and things like well, that? Well, just I, you know, we have most of our skill kids back on offense and quarterbacks and Jaron and Will that know the offense and and uh, tight ends back. So um, that was fun to just watch those guys uh, in we were much further along on install on offense, much further along than we'd been in the past. Uh, and guys running around with confidence and making plays and having excitement. And then on defense, um, you know, there's a couple guys that have played a lot of football. Daniel Green's played a lot of football for us, and he's trying to help some of the, the younger linebackers. Uh, Julius and Echo have played a ton of football for us. They're trying to help the the safeties that are kind of, kind of coming along. Um, and so it's just neat to see the mixture of, of veteran guys that are stepping up from a leadership role and stepping up from an accountability role uh, and, and making sure that uh, the next wave of guys, you know, you, you don't have a chance to just get your feet wet. We need to have you ready to roll and ready to play fast. What do you expect from Deuce Green? Uh, uh, he'll take the next step. Uh, and for, for him, uh, I think that is more probably pre-snap stuff kid's a really good football player as we all know he he's physical he runs well he covers well it's just the pre-snap stuff of seeing things before they happen and being even a better communicator that's what we need to get from from deuce and he's capable of doing that and he's ready for that to make everybody around him better by by really talking and seeing things that that uh, he's seeing pre-snap to, so everybody knows how, how close is taylor portier at this point uh He's he's close. Um, he's probably further along than like Khalid. We have to be smart with Taylor as well. We don't want to have him have any setbacks. Um, but he's moving around doing a lot of drills. We'll keep him out of contact things right now. Uh, but you know we're just trying to get him back into the groove of playing football again because he's a really good player that we missed last year. Uh, and and him, it's just getting his confidence back in his knee. That's the biggest thing. I mean, a few years you haven't added a transferred tight end. Does that mean this is a pretty critical spring for the guys returning? Yeah. Um, I've been really impressed in the winter with Sammy Wheeler. Uh, we were excited that Sammy chose to come back because he's already graduated. And Sammy's taken on a great leadership role. And uh, he's he's bigger. He's stronger. He's, he's fit into that tight end role now. And I think he's going to lead that group. Uh, he's done a, a tremendous job. You know, Ben Sennett is a is a good player that's a young player that I think has got so much ability and he's just scratching the surface and Ben's got to have a really good spring because I think he can be better than than what he even was last year uh, and then guys like Will Swanson um, we're counting on Connor Fox is coming off an injury but we're counting on him we have some good depth there um, but uh, you know who's going to be that guy opposite really opposite of Sammy on scholarship now too yeah and then I know that <clears throat> Brian Leapak's kind of been in his position since bowl prep, but how has he kind of settled into his new role? Done a really, really good job, and and uh, the guys were excited when Brian was hired. Brian's uh, a great energy guy. Um, obviously, he's very intelligent, knows the game of football really well, can explain the game of football well, um, yeah, does a lot of things for our staff um, with da data analytics and stuff, and um, Brian was was ready for this opportunity, and uh, you know he probably similar to Colin wanted to prove that he was the guy throughout that bull prep. And uh, uh, you know we talk about how how Colin did and how excited we were for um, 
him gaining that role of offensive coordinator, I was just as excited for, for Brian LaPac because Brian earned the job um, with uh, how he handled that tight end uh, fullback room and, and how those guys played and how those guys' uh, preparation was. And then you guys have kind of announced him over the last couple of weeks, but can you kind of give a rundown of your, your, your new analyst and what you – what, what you like about what they've yeah what they've um so uh clint brown we hired to he's a defensive guy and i've known clint forever because he was uh, at south dakota state um he's going to help on the offensive side he's going to replace brian lapack and so i'm excited for clint because he'll give that uh, offense a different perspective being a defensive guy and uh great experience uh, on his side um, and then on offense, we hired Josh Buford, uh, an old high school coach in the in the Park Hill district uh, of Casey Mo, and he's come in. He's just started this week. Excited about uh, uh, about him as well. Um, and then we still have um, Matt Cardulis and David Orloff on on the defensive side. That I can't say enough great things about those those two. Make our operation on defense go uh, because of their organization and how how smart those guys are. Who are you looking at at center to replace Noah right now? Uh, a, a number of people. Well, Hayden Gillum's probably taking the most snaps there uh, from a practice standpoint, being Noah's true backup last year. Hadley Panzer is another guy that we're going to give a bunch of, uh, of reps to to see if he can um, – you know, he's been a guard, but we, we think he can be a really good center. We need to have some depth there. And then we move Sam Shields there a little bit too. Uh, Sam's been uh, more of a guard throughout his time, but uh, um, we need to continue to, to develop centers. And so we have those three guys for the most part taking most of the reps. And we'll see, you know, it's a pretty wide open position. That's the one spot on the offensive line that uh, we may move some people around with Biebs and, and Duff. And, and we know we've got... Uh, uh, Taylor coming back and, and a kid like Andrew Line Gang is going to be really good. But the center spot, we've got to get solidified this spring. With Adrian, <clears throat> um, when would you anticipate he would be able to start throwing again? Um, probably May. I think his progression starts here in April. I don't, I, I don't see us him throwing much in March, or if it is, it's Nerf balls and things like that. Pretty, pretty um, similar to Skyler. And I think in April he'll start throwing a little bit more. But we're not going to put him in a spot in a team drill where anybody could bang into him or anything. So um, I would say maybe later April, for sure in May, he'll get a full May, June, and July to be around the guys and, and develop that uh, uh, camaraderie with receivers and tight ends. Yeah, Kellis actually asked one of my questions about the center, but just the interior do you, offensive line – in general, the three guys you're replacing starters. Uh, yeah, well, you know, TP was essentially a starter, so we feel good about you know Taylor replacing either Rebo or, or Ben. Um, so if we get Taylor back healthy, I'm excited about what uh, um, what he's going to be able to bring because he's a really good player. Um, Andrew Linegang's growth, uh, maybe being a guard or a tackle, allows us to have BB play some guard and tackle as well. Um, Hadley Panzers played guard and, and center. Um, Katori Levinson, based on how, how far along Carver Willis comes, how far Whit Mitchum comes, we've got some good depth there, could also fit into that interior role. So I, I like the fact that Riles has got a number of guys to, to work with. Some of these guys are, are coming off some injuries that, uh, you know, like TP, that uh, I don't know how much they're going to be able to fully participate this spring, but. Uh, um, we have a core group of guys, and we just got to make sure that whether it's we put the stress on a Cooper BB or a KT, something that's been around to be a, a swing guy that's got to play guard and tackle. So is that that's something you're looking at with with BB is you bet. maybe moving them inside? You bet. Just your thoughts on the wide receiver group and, and what you expect to see them from them out of this spring. Um, great experience, uh, great playmaking ability. Excited to uh, uh, have as many guys back as we do. I think Landry is the only one that that and Eric Hommel that played significantly for us. But uh, you know, between Philip, Malik, um, and Cade, I mean, those are the the three that played the most late in the season. Uh, those three really understand the game well, uh, understand our offense well, uh, are, are good leaders, 
uh, and, and productive players. I'm, I'm excited to see this spring how Sebastian Taylor does. Uh, I think he's finally healthy. Uh, unfortunately for Seabass, he just was never healthy in the fall, and he knew it. He would be the first one to tell you, I was not healthy the entire fall. His injury re- occurred, you know, middle of December of whatever, of 20, so he didn't get his surgery. So it's been a little over a year now, and sometimes that's what it would take uh, on that kind of an injury. So I'm excited for Seabass. Um, I think Ty Bowman's going to bring something to the table uh, that he's one of our better special teams guys, and, and I love that out of a wide receiver. And then a guy that just made a couple of splash plays today, R.J. Garcia is a really talented player, and he made a couple of really splash plays today um, at, at practice that uh, you know we've got him in Phillips' spot. But I'm excited because R.J. Uh, is a dynamic player. Landry um, at the beginning of that answer. I was just curious, the discussion that you had with him before he reached his recent decision uh, to step away from the game. Yeah, um, it's been a little bit since I've uh, communicated uh, with Landry, but I I know um, he had some difficult decisions that uh, were all going to be positive, uh, no matter what he chose and what path he chose. Uh, And it was a matter of him deciding that he's okay with being done with football. And uh, he's got a greater calling. And, um, you know, I, I'm excited because uh, I'm going to be able to say that uh, uh, I coached a guy that's uh, going to go to the priesthood and be a priest, and maybe I can take care of some of my sins uh, later on, and I can call <laughs> call Landry, and, and uh, he can come in and, and help me out. But uh, what a great, great young man, great family, and uh, excited for, for the future with Landry. I wonder with having three players transfers coming from the same school in Nebraska, do those guys have you noticed they have any kind of special bond, or is it made oh, it easier yeah. for them to? Oh, oh, without without a doubt. Um, you know, you see those three guys hanging around. You know, but I also see those guys interacting with with the team, and uh, they fit in really well. Uh, once again, you know, we we did a, I thought we did a really good job of vetting the guys that we brought into the program. Uh, that came from different schools, uh, and I've been very pleased to see how they all just fit in. You know, I'll give you a great example. When I uh, walked over to practice at the indoor today, all four quarterbacks got out of the same car, and and that tells me an awful lot. That uh, you know, those kids accept Adrian, and Adrian is fitting into that crew. Um, and uh, I see Josh Hayes hanging out with Echo and Julius, guys he's competing with. Um, we all want the same thing. We all want to be successful and have a chance to win, and we all know we need each other, and uh, uh, it's something that's really important. You, you have to make our locker room better uh, to be a part of this team, and, and all those guys do. How valuable was it to get Colin in that one-game scenario to kind of break him in? I think it, it helped him as far as – not just the game, I think the preparation is what was so important for him is to be out in front leading all of us uh, for three weeks. And granted, we were on the road a little bit, but you know he was out in front and leading everybody and getting the practice plans and the game plan together. And he leans on everybody on offense and does a really good job of getting input from other people. Uh, and, and then coming up with a collective idea and saying, here's what we're going to do. Uh, I think the game will will help him, but I think the preparation is probably even more valuable to him. How do you see your cornerback depth at present? The corners? Um, well, obviously we have Julius and Echo that uh, have played an awful lot of ball for us. Uh, I, I know that Josh Hayes is a really good football player. I've been around him enough to know that he's going to have an impact for us, whether or not it's at a corner or as as an inside nickel player because he can do some of the things that Reggie did. So he's going to play an awful lot for us. Um, we have a couple of younger players that um, you know are growing and learning that – who knows? Yeah, you know, I mean, are they as experienced as, as those three in front of them? Probably not, but they're going to get their opportunity, and I'm excited to see this spring how they do competing against those good wideouts. What's the uh, impact of having Cade Warner come back this year? Huge, um, great leadership, great uh, uh, a guy that um, walks the walk and and does what he says he's going to do. Uh, I, I've been as impressed with him as I have anybody on the football team as far as – Cade doesn't have a bad day. Cade loves life. And Cade is as impactful off the field, uh, 
getting guys to come watch film, getting guys to play spike ball outside and hang out, get, hanging out with people in the in the uh, performance table to what he does in the weight room, uh, to what he does on the on the field. Um, he is the spark right now. Uh, we knew we had to try to f- fulfill what we lost with Noah Johnson, and that's a hard job to to kind of galvanize the whole offense. And right now, Cade's done a really good job. There's other guys that are going to do it, but Cade's kind of taken that rein and said, I- I'll be the guy that jumps out in front. And uh, um, we were so excited when Cade decided to – to come back, and uh, he had a he had a good bowl game too. You know, he was in he was in the mix, had had a lot of targets, was excited about what we were doing moving forward with the offense, uh, as we all are. And Cade's going to have a big impact in our pass game. How about as a technician? What what makes him so, uh, I guess, good? Great route runner, um, knows how to beat leverage, knows how to how to get open, uh, does a does as good a job as, as anybody of building a rapport with the people that are throwing the football to you. Yeah. And that's he's watching film with all the QBs, all the QBs he's watching film with. He's throwing. Obviously, he can't throw with Adrian. He's done that in the past, but he can't do that right now. So he's got Jake, and he's got Will, and he's got Jaron, and they're throwing balls all the time and talking about things and and helping a kid like RJ, helping a guy like Ty from alignments to stances to to reading coverages. You know, there's a selfless guy. We talk about one of our, our core values of being selfless. You know, Cade wants to win. Yeah, he wants – balls thrown to him and those things, but he wants to win and he wants to have an impact on guys. And that's, that's fun to see as a coach when you have a guy that, that is all in and, and uh, wants, wants what's best for everybody on the team. Got our big pro day tomorrow. Got a bunch of guys back for, for pro day and uh, most of them are out of practice. So I'm excited for those guys to um, have an opportunity to showcase their their talents. I got a quick conversation with Sky uh, about his time in Indy, and uh, um, it, it was pretty special, pretty cool to watch him grow. And I'm excited for him as well as all the other guys uh, to go out and perform uh, tomorrow morning.